Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of Narcissu. Hopefully this time, I won't have any recording issues or microphone troubles. The Silver Coupe, now in motion once more. Out on the bright side, I was no longer, no longer worried about running out of gas. On the not so bright side, we only had about 2,000 yen left. This worried me, but it wasn't something that preoccupied me much more. Hey, question. Could it be that you're an expert on cars too? Not really. What do you mean, not really? You knew that this car took 50 litres of gas, didn't you? Darts. Of course, it may have well be that kind of thing that was absolutely common knowledge that I just didn't have. But she proven that she was an expert on these roads not so long ago. Having been caught by surprise twice now, I took out the vehicle specification from the glove compartment. And of course, you know the make and model of this car as well, don't you? Is that a question? You can think of this as a quiz if you want. Dots. Integra Type R Coupe. Correct. And it's Bex. 99 model, 5 speed, max 200 HP. I had no expectation that he'd actually answer. I'd almost involuntarily followed along on the vehicle spec sheet as he rattled off figures with total, with total disinterest. Length 4380, width 1695, engine displacement 1797cc. Do you want me to go on? No, it's alright. You're correct. I put the vehicle spec sheet back in this place. I couldn't believe my ears, but it nailed every single specification. I didn't think one could just memorize these things and I just couldn't even venture a guess as to why she had. But right before my eyes, she had gotten every single spec sheet correct. And, thinking back to the rose and flowers, I was getting the impression that she knew a lot about a lot. Hey, just why do you know so much about everything? Dots. It's nothing. It's just that I'm older than you. And with that bare response, she went back to her usual silence. With her staring out the window again, I didn't find myself able to throw any more questions at her. Older. It really didn't look that way at all, but this was something that she said before too. Her name was Sumi, her blood type was O. There was a written on her right ID bracelet. There was very little indication to show me that she was older than me at all. Oops, sorry about the mapping in a way. Around when the sun started peeking out from under the clouds, the silver coupe speeding along. No destination, no place to go, just running forward. No more worries about gasoline but no more money, either. Only about 2,000 yen left. Only enough for 3 to 4 more days at most of convenience store food. Alright, so now, what do you want to do? I have no idea what you mean by that. I mean that we have no more money left. And so... Look, you. Her appearance as unchanging as ever. And this conversation we were having about eating rice balls broke out at the convenience store not so long ago. Finally, the fact that, is that even if we were driving along like this, we were using up gasoline, gasoline little by little. 
maybe it might have been better to just stay still without doing anything at all. But it was impossible for me to stay still without doing anything. Without shooting for anything. And I kept driving with those feelings at heart. If he do kept just yeah. If we just kept driving on normal highways, we wouldn't we would not have to go sleep in about three days. Likewise, we only had enough for three to four days worth of food with the two thousand yen we had left. We were obviously going to become too poor to do anything soon enough. Hey, do you want to try go? Going to this emoji island? Thoughts? No reply. She just kept staring out the window as per usual. I think I might want to. Why? Well, that's. It wasn't as if we'd escaped from 7F with any goal or destination in mind. Because east or west, no matter where, anything was fine with me. But maybe that's why I wanted a goal and a destination. Because anything was fine by me. Around when the daylight had given over to the darkness of night, I had stopped the car in the parking lot of a other pachinko parlour. Obviously, I wasn't planning on winning any money through pachinko or slots. I knew that there wasn't much I could do with on just 2,000 yen alone. But if I was skillful enough, I might just be able to swipe 10 or 20,000 yen. That was my guess, based on the many times I've been out to pachinko parties in the past. If I only had that much, we'd be okay in the first place. I might even be able to get to a Roger Island on that amount. And so, I told her about the plan that I, that I had just for talk. How about it? Want to try it out? No. Okay. Very well. I'd expected it, but she shot me down immediately. I hadn't heard that she cooperate, cooperate with me in the first place. And I told her about my plan as a fair accompli. Not because I wanted her to aid in it. Alright then. Wait here. I got out of the car and started into the pachinko parlour alone. It was more crowded than I'd thought. Lots of pachinko balls. Lots of people, and more importantly, cast boxes crowded everywhere. As good a place as any. And thinking this, I headed over to the slots machines. Dots. I inspected them from the corridor for a while. And after finish my and after finished my survey, I focused on one set of machines. Lots of major A salary men, alright. Up to four boxes at their feet, and up, no, and up to two on racks above them. And an empty stand separated each of them. From what I'd seen before, these men hadn't come with acquaintances or friends. Just satisfied their requirements. Perhaps in a place like this, no one would notice if I swiped one of these cast boxes. And I need a drink of water. And in a store like this, each one probably held 20,000 yen or so. And with just that much, I just kept waiting there for one of the salarymen to go on to go to to go to the bathroom. After a little while, after roughly, roughly 30 minutes had passed, a salaryman finally stood up from his seat. 
after I told him a bit to make sure he was going to the bathroom, I just back to the stand that he'd occupied. And watching the people who were hitting the slots and at least attendance, I slowly approached the last stand. Then, so as, no, as to not raise any suspicion, as if it were the most natural thing in the world, I swiped one of the cat boxes on the foot. Clink, clink, clink. That moment, coins scattered everywhere with a thunderous noise. I'd been meaning to pick it up. No, really, I ha I, no, I, I really had picked it up with my very own hand. But it unable to bear that weight, and a cast box crossed onto the floor. Everyone turned into it in my direction to see what the commotion was all about. I got the feeling that someone was shouting. I got the feeling that someone was running towards me. But that was all behind me. I had already bolted and was less than two meters away from the entrance of the establishment by then. Slam. Pant, pant. I put the engine in ignition in a hurry and floored the pedal. And when I spun the wheel to make my hasty getaway, just then... Bam! Crunch! Crunch! Eek! I'd run against the curb or something as I turned to make, as I turned to make my getaway. Lost the horrible crunching sound. But I accelerated onto, onto the road before, before me for giving it a second thought. Pant, pant, thigh, thigh. My sudden constructing out of the chest and a silver coupe, speeding out of the daylight and into the darkness. I was concerned about the crust a little while ago. Oops. But I had had to distance myself from my place now. And soon, after 10 minutes of this, I fared distance away from that pachinko parlour. I stopped at some roadside and started to get, to get out to inspect the damage. Are things okay? Yeah, doesn't look too serious. She sounded slightly worried as he called out to me. I answered her as I inspected the damage. There was just a bump in the rear bumper and a small crack in the muffler. Didn't look as if there was any problem driving like this. Sigh. I let out a sigh, somewhat relieved. That sucked. I thought back. I I thought back to what had just just happened at the Pachinko parlor. I sit up there, but had I been a little more skillful, I might have I might have pulled it off. And the reason I wasn't able to hold on to the cast box was because it had been a, a, a little while since I lifted something heavy. If I had held on to it with all my strength at the outset, I might have been able to make it. So, you miscalculated. Huh? The current you can't do what the former you could have. She spoke as if she seemed straight through me. But that kind of weight. So it's best not to think of it in the same way. Dots. Perhaps she was right. I didn't want to admit how strange I was. Fair enough. I hadn't anticipated at all that I could grow this week. Then, what should I do? Dots. No answer. I turned in silence towards the window to stare into, into the dark night sky. This was probably the way she was telling me to give up.
And that's the end of that chapter. This episode is going to be slightly shorter than normal because I think, because I think I will do each, each chapter as an episode rather than part way through. But with me, that is just the end of this episode. I hope my audio quality is better than my last attempt. But as if for this time, I'm Heath Mayu. Goodbye.